Beginning in early August of this year, the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency began getting reports of some deer die-offs in some of our Middle Tennessee and Western Tennessee counties. And our biologists have gone out there and we've, we've taken samples and submitted the samples. And just as we presumed, it appears that we're getting a strong case of EHD or epizootic hemorrhagic disease. We just want to make sure that the hunters and landowners and farmers out there are well aware of what's going on in Tennessee. It does appear to be a more severe outbreak. Generally, we do have cases every year of this. But thus far, we have approximately 30 counties reporting outbreaks of EHD, which is above normal. Generally, we just have a, a few counties. And we just want to rest assure everyone that this is a completely natural disease. What would do us good is if you can call and report the outbreak. If you do discover one, generally you'll find deer around water sources and usually you'll find a few bodies. It's just not one deer that gets infected. Usually if you have an outbreak, you'll find multiple carcasses around a water source. If you could just please call our regional office and report it to one of the biologists and let them know what county and what township you're, re you're recording these die-offs, we'd really appreciate it. We may not send a biologist out there to test the animals since we have confirmed the disease. And so just make us aware of it and rest assured it is completely natural and do not worry about it. Once the deer survive this episode, they are fit to eat during the hunting season. The, the deer herd will bounce back uh, strong within a, a year or two if you do experience a, a major die-off in your area. EHD or epizootic hemorrhagic disease is a disease caused by a virus that's transmitted by small biting insects called midges that are a little bit like mosquitoes, uh, generally breed in water and, and things of that sort. And the disease transmitted goes into the deer's bloodstream and generally some deer are able to just ward off the disease, their immune system just handles it and the deer do fine and you'd never know that they were sick but other deer uh, eventually come down with the disease and various um, kinds of things that will cause a lack of appetite and various uh, kinds of things that'll cause the deer to lose weight and get weak and eventually the disease will play its course out in, in a severe enough case the deer gets sick enough and actually dies. There aren't really any known kinds of treatments or anything of that sort for the disease doesn't have much of effect on other animals other than deer as far as it's causing any kind of death. Typically the disease weakens deer. You'll see deer that uh, if you look closely at deer that, that you may find dead laying around sometimes near water holes and places like that. They will have a bluish tongue and they'll show all kinds of sores around the mouth, the face, in various places. We'll oftentimes see these deer near water, which is you know, coincidental to the fact that you know they get a lot of swelling in the mouth, the tongue swells and things like that, so that they're probably coming more and more frequently or staying near water so that they can help to sort of take care of some of those symptoms that they have. And it appears that uh, deer at least deer fawns have some a bit of immunity to EHD for the first few months of their life. Uh, but after a time, some of that immunity seems to wear off and as they get older, they, they're more likely to get the disease. Although there's still plenty of individuals out there in, the, in any deer population that seem to never get the disease or they're just able to to have the, the virus in their system and it doesn't cause any problems for them and they just you know maintain normal health. As far as uh, what people can do about EHD you know the real uh, thing that you can do is just be aware that it's happening and not be alarmed if you see dead deer around in, in some of these situations. We don't recommend that you handle these animals or anything like that just leave them as they are the way you find them. Don't be overly concerned if, uh, if you see large numbers of individuals, just let them stay where they are. Don't deal with it in any other way. And there's really nothing else that can be done. There are no kinds of treatments, anything that, that we're aware of that uh, at present that can be used that can be administered to deer to keep them from getting the disease or to 
treat it uh, deer that may have the disease. It just has to play out its course. Uh, once temperatures get cold and we start to get freezing temperatures generally uh, in the, the late fall, then the disease will subside because the, the insect, the, the midges, are small kind of mosquito-like um, insects that transmit the disease to deer die off when it gets cold. And so that breaks the cycle. One of the things that the agency uses to gauge how prevalent the disease was is during the fall hunting season when we work our biological check stations we will get deer coming into the check station that exhibit some of the signs that they survived the the disease when it when it was in full swing one of the major aspects that we look for is sloughing of the hooves it, it appears that the skin on the, the exterior of the hoof begins falling off or flaking off. This is a telltale sign that the deer did become infected with EHD, but it was strong enough to overcome the disease. For all intents and purposes, approximately two-thirds of the deer that do get infected with EHD do survive the disease, and they transmit those antibodies to their offspring, which that is the main reason why these severe bouts occur on a five or six year cycle. The deer develop a type of resistance to the disease and once that generation of deer die off, then you generally tend to have another big outbreak of the disease. So the fact that so many deer are getting infected this year, it may seem bad, but believe it or not, in the long run, it's a good thing because what they're doing is producing some disease resistant deer out there, which will carry us forward through the next four or five years and have minimal outbreaks in the, in the near future. As it stands right now in the third week of August, we've had approximately 30 counties reporting outbreaks or small pockets of EHD. Most of these outbreaks have occurred in western Tennessee and central Tennessee. Regions 1 and Region 2 seem to have been hit the hardest. We have approximately seven or eight counties reporting from Region 3 and only about four or five counties reporting from Region 4. That's not to say we won't have more cases crop up in the near future, but it, it appears that the counties with the highest deer densities obviously are, are being discovered first because they've got more deer to be found due to the, the outbreak of the disease than some of the lower deer density counties. So it's, it's typically what we'd expect to find, and unfortunately, like, like I said before, it's, it's something that's completely natural, and we just have to let it run its course, and we'll, we'll be okay.